My name is Darlene Lim and I'm based at the NASA Ames Research Center and I'm here at the uh, Houghton Mars Project at Houghton Crater on Devon Island and what I do is I collect water. So a lot of people say I do bucket science. Um, I just visit lakes and I visit ponds and I collect water from there but the purpose of all this um, is actually twofold. It's to look at um, the effects of you know the current environmental change that we're in on these water bodies. These water bodies that I've been studying, the lakes and the ponds, many of them are as old as 10,000 years. They're post-glacial ponds, post-glacial lakes. Um, but what we're seeing throughout the Arctic is an interesting phenomenon in that they are um, shrinking in size, they're in depth, um, and many of the lakes and the ponds that I visited this trip are significantly reduced in their depth and also their area um, than the last time I was here four years ago. So um, we're seeing this phenomenon, um, as I mentioned, not just on this island but on other islands as well. And so this is commensurate with the period of um, global climate warming, um, and of course climate warming is magnified at these latitudes. So that's why I'm here, that's one of the reasons why I'm here is to essentially document and look at what's been happening to the water bodies in and around this camp over that period of time. The other aspect of what I'm doing is also um, looking at the possible effects that we're having on these water bodies. And so um, we are in close proximity to a lot of different lakes and ponds. We don't necessarily have a direct effect on them in that we're not, that we're not drawing water from them um, for drinking, but you know, driving our ATVs nearby and so forth may be having an impact on these water bodies. So I'm looking to see if I can pick anything, if anything at all, up. And in fact, there may be very little um, effects on these water bodies, um, which would be great to see. So what I'm doing today is I've just come back from a traverse where I went out to Stanford uh, Pond. So just so you know, um, we distinguish between lakes and ponds up in the Arctic, because um, we can, and uh, anything less than two meters in depth is considered a pond, and anything greater than two meters in depth is considered a lake. Um, and this is because the mean annual, or the mean um, thickness of, um, of ice on these freshwater bodies is two meters. So if something is less than two meters, it's going to freeze right to the bottom. And so the ecology of that water body is going to be fairly simple. You're not going to have fish. Um, but if you have a, a lake that is deeper than two meters, then in fact you can have open water under that ice um, through the winter. So you, that, that particular water body can sustain fish. So very different ecosystems um, in each one of those, different, uh, in those two different uh, water bodies. So that's why we distinguish between the two. So what I'm doing right now is um, I collected this water from a Stanford Pond um, today with a couple of people on a traverse and um, what I'll be doing is just prepping it to um, run through a filter that will actually screen out for chlorophyll. And so we look at uh, chlorophyll concentrations to get a sense of biomass um, within the water body and uh, so I'm actually going to be running 300 um, mills of pond water through this filter. I'm just going to fill up this uh, modified beaker that has a bit of a neck on it and then pull a vacuum with my handy dandy hand pump. Very old school. I don't subscribe to generators because they're loud. <laughs> um, and all I need to do is just start pulling a vacuum. And as you can see here, the water is going to start running through, down through the neck of the beaker, in past this um, particular funnel, and um, uh, and the filter is sitting right between the beaker and this um, apparatus here, and then it's going to flow, the water um, is going to collect, the filtrate is going to collect um, down below. And what I'm actu actually interested in is the filter itself, because as I mentioned, it's actually going to collect um, um, for chlorophyll A, or particles anyways that we'll look at chlorophyll A concentrations in. So I'm just going to use my hand pump. So the filter is? The filter is just here. It's caught between these two um, apparatuses. So the bottom, uh, um, I guess, flat plate here and then this neck. And this is a clamp that's holding those two together as I draw the vacuum. So you can see that this water is pretty it's pretty free and clear of um, any sort of clogging particles um, or, I guess, benthic, or pardon me, planktonic organisms um, that might actually fill up the, the filter and clog the water from flowing through. Um, you know, I'm barely, at, I'm barely pumping and it's flowing through at a very rapid rate. This water is very fresh. It was very cold. It was um, 
2 degrees Celsius when I was up there just a little while ago. So water bodies that are um, shallow, so in this case ponds, um, have lower thermal inertia and all that means is that um, it's, these water bodies will heat up and cool down at a much faster rate than say a deeper, larger water body like a lake, which um, is something that would you know, heat up and stay warmer for a longer period of time. And so if you have a cold day, um, in many circumstances, this has been published on that these ponds will actually track the outside air temperature. So if it's colder outside, the pond's going to be colder itself. Um, versus the lake, will stay, will stay at a fairly constant temperature through uh, most of the year, except for the surface waters will heat up a little bit more. Um, so anyways, uh, I've just completed filtering, so I'm just going to release the vacuum and get ready to put it with the filter. Okay. So where some people will go out and camp and collect rocks, and that's their gold. So this is my gold. This is the filter here. Um, that will later on get analyzed back in Canada. Actually, just outside of Toronto, Canada. And um, that That's is... Good. Then you don't have to bring all the water back with you. Just the that. filters with the stuff in it. We do have to bring some water back. Um, this is part of what happens. Um, so there's kind of a variety of different parts to, to bringing back water samples. So we'll actually collect water right from the site and um, of course I made that a little too small um, and that will get taken back unfiltered for a variety of analyses things like um, we'll look at major and minor ions um, we'll look at uh, uh, metals but the metals you actually have to filter for we'll look at nutrient content um, filtered and unfiltered we'll look at the chlorophyll as I just did here um, and um, also things like silica in the, in the water column itself. So I'm actually taking back water samples um, that I collected directly from the pond and then we'll uh, analyze them when we get back. And so this is also part of the analysis here. And one big part of doing field work is to have a handy dandy Sharpie so you can write down what you just did so you don't screw up, which is very easy to do when you're cold and tired. So this is Stanford Pond. We, um, Today is July 23rd, 08, and this is a chlorophyll A sample, and I ran 300 mils through it. And this will get put into a freezer and stored for, and for analysis further south. So um, just as a little aside, most of the lakes and ponds around here are named after um, universities or colleges of um, people's liking, so anything from um, I was a grad student at the University of Toronto when I first started coming here, and so there are all the Toronto kind of sub-colleges, University of Toronto sub-colleges are, are um, represented in some of the lakes and ponds, and you have Cornell and Stanford, and there's Laval, which is a university in Canada as well, um, all throughout the, the hot and crater area, which is very humorous to me, and so I think it's kind of fun that people have done that. It's probably better than what I called them, which is just by their very, very boring nickname, Delta Papa, which just stands for Devon Island Site P, but that's me. I just very simple, but it's actually called Stanford. I see. And what is the name of the lake you went to today? I went to Stanford. And that's that was Stanford. Yeah, okay. I went to Stanford. So my hus my husband's alma mater. So there we go. I feel proud. I went to Stanford today. <laughs> and how many more? filters do you have to do? You're going to be doing this for a while? Um, actually, uh, this particular filter, I'm done. So this is actually my last site. Yesterday we pushed pretty hard and we got seven of eight sites done. Uh, and so this was the last one. So it was a pretty big marathon sampling excursion yesterday. So just one filter per site? Uh, yep, for this particular um, sample uh, that, that I'm looking for. But then I'm actually going to be filtering for metals um, and for nutrients very shortly Different as well. types of filters. You bet. I see. Yeah. Well, that's it. Well, thank you very much. No Charlie. problem. <laughs>